If you want to lose a ton of money, then just spend all the coins you see in this video. But if you want to make a lot of money, then just don't spend any of the coins you see in this video because these 1966 coins are selling online for a ton of money and you don't want to become another statistic. Every single day, there are people out there selling their coins and getting completely taken advantage of. Please do yourself some justice, spend time doing your homework and research. My goal is to completely equip you with all of the knowledge and skills you need to make sure that you never get scammed and ripped off online. I hear stories every single day. The next story I hear, I hope is not you. So let's hop right into this video. With this 1966 one cent coin, keep in mind, this is a memorial cent coin. Wheat cent coins were produced from 1909 to 1958. Starting in 1959, we have the memorial cent coins that you see here. This example sold for $1,170. You just have to know that this is a special mint set coin. We won't go into it too deeply, but but it's the specific type of strike that happened with this coin that makes it so rare. If your coin looks like this and it's in really good condition, you might have an SMS coin, especially if it's coming out of a collection. We'll be brief on this coin, but there are three coins here total and they are each very rare errors. This 1966 has a second strike that is 90% off center. This next coin here was struck on a five cent planchet. So instead of it being struck on a 25 cent planchet, it was instead struck on a five cent planchet. And last but not least, we have this Jefferson nickel that was struck on a cent planchet. So a lot of really cool errors that happened here. And these three coins, someone got a good deal. They sold for 1200 bucks. I probably would have paid that, saved up my money and bought these three coins. Very, very cool. Today, they're probably worth more money, actually. Now, here's a 1966 Jefferson nickel that sold for $1,500. It was graded by PCGS at a mint state 64 with the full steps on the back. So one thing you want to look for on your coin is a mint mark. Now this coin has no mint mark whatsoever. Typically it's going to be a letter P, S, D, or sometimes a W, standing for the West Point Mint. Depending on where your coin was produced can influence the value of your coin. This one got the 64 grade, which is a pretty middle of the road grade when it comes to grading your coins. This one has the FS designation, which stands for the full steps on the back. So on the back of the coin, you see Thomas Jefferson's house there, Monticello. Now above the word Monticello, you're going to see these full steps. These steps are the highest point on the coin. They get worn down the quickest and they are the hardest to strike during the minting process. Do keep in mind that coins that do not receive a mint state grade will not get the designation of full steps, even if you have the full steps in your coin. That may sound a bit confusing, but any grade below a 60 is considered to be circulated. Anything that is 60 to 70 is mint state. People go after the full steps. It seems silly, but people will pay more money if your coin has a full step on the back. This example sold for $1,500 for a little Jefferson nickel. That's crazy. $5,040. Same exact thing going on here. It's a 1966 no mint mark coin. However, the previous example was a mint state 64. This example is a mint state 65 plus. Big grade difference there. Even though it's one grade, you also have that plus designation that will really increase the value of your coin. Even though you see some gashes and nicks in the face of Jefferson there, that is okay because mint state coins are meant to be kind of thrown around during the minting process. These are naturally occurring because they're being tossed around. Just understand that the plus grade will increase the value of your coin. A plus grade is given by a grader if they think the coin looks really, really nice for the grade. Understand that every point difference when it comes to grading your coin will result in a lot more money in your pocket. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise, especially if the coin is exactly the same. A 1966 five cent coin in a 64 will naturally bring less money than the same coin in a 65 or higher. Once again, it sold for $5,040. Here we have a 1966 25 cent Washington quarter graded by PCGS at a mint state 68. Now this coin sold for $5,760. That's a lot of money for a Washington quarter. Understand that 1932 was the first year of issue for the Washington quarter and is typically the most rare and sought after. However, high graded examples in different years are really going to increase the odds of you having a rare coin worth a lot of money. This example got graded at a 68 grade. That's only two points away from the perfect grade of 70. That is the main reason why this specimen of a coin sold for $5,760. $21,000 bucks for this next coin. It is a 1966 25 cent coin. However, it got graded at a 68 plus grade. Same exact coin as the previous one. However, it has the plus grade 
period and you can see there is some rainbow toning going on with the coin. So toning is a naturally occurring oxidation process that happens depending on where the coin is stored in the collection of the person collecting the coin. Toning can either increase or decrease the value of the coin based upon the eye of the beholder. Some people may look at this coin and think it's the most cool thing ever, while other collectors may think it's very unattractive. All you need is two very high-end collectors to bid up a coin and make it worth a lot more money than you may imagine. Keep in mind also when you sell your coin, market timing is so, so important. For example, during the 2020 virus, a lot of people thought the collectible market would crash heavily, so people were selling. However, what people were not expecting is the highest bull run for these coins ever. We saw prices that we've never seen before in the history of coin collecting. That in mind, do have a decent pulse on the market. See how coins are selling, see how much they're bringing in auction, because that may be a good indicator of when you should be selling your coins for the most money possible. If you enjoyed this video and you want to learn more about collecting coins and currency, we have a completely free coin and currency ebook down below. Pick that up. There are no strings attached whatsoever. It's completely free. We will see you in the next video.